Hey guys, Ray from Love You RV. So I'm back with a quick update on this WFCO converter charger that I installed back in the winter time. Uh, the company sent it out for me to test out for them, and its uh, claim to fame is it's an auto detect. So it will auto detect whether your batteries are lead acid type or lithium type. And that worked out fine. It detected that I had lithium batteries. Um, so I said I'd use it for a while and come back. And lately, the last month or so, I've been using it a lot because we're back in the Pacific Northwest and camping a lot under trees. So I'm using the generator to charge my batteries a lot. Um, down south, I mostly solar handled it. But now this comes more into play and I was able to test it quite a bit. So every time I need to charge, I just plug in my RV and this thing comes on and it's giving me the full 50 to 55 amp output that it can do. Um, there hasn't been any issues with it doing that. Um, it's always detected, stay on lithium detection mode. Um, the only thing I've noticed is uh, sometimes we'll have the generator running and this thing will be putting out you know, around 50 amps like it should. But I'll want to use the, the microwave and it would overload the generator if I was using this and the microwave at the same time. So we'll turn this off and then uh, just by flipping a breaker I can turn it off, use the microwave and then come back right away. Say we use the microwave for a minute, come back and flip this on and it'll default back down to around 15 or 20 amps and it'll kind of stay like that. So I think what happens is there's from it charging there's maybe it raises the voltage a little bit high and then when you do that quick um, on and off again it tricks it into thinking the batteries are charged so it kind of goes into a float mode um, what I can do is I can turn this off and leave it for a good 10 minutes or so then flip it back on and it goes back into charging mode again um, the other thing like I mentioned in the review was I'm not really that fond of the fan noise that it has especially when you're charging lithium you're going to be using the full 50 amps so the fan is really on quite uh, strong it's kind of a variable speed fan but it's kind of at its full noisy mode and I have a big battery bank you know so I might be running um, for hours and hours to recharge that uh, battery bank it's not so much a problem when I'm off-grid with generator charging but say you went to an RV park and you plugged in and this thing kicked on you could uh, kind of annoy yourself trying to uh, get your batteries charged if I was going to keep it as my main charging source, like I have lots of solar and stuff, so I don't really need it that often. I'd probably move it away from this location somewhere. It's kind of inside this plastic case, kind of makes it a hollow point. And where it's located is right under our, our kitchen stove and fridge and stuff. So it's right in the living area. That's why it's kind of annoying. So I would probably move it to somewhere like a storage area. Uh, one other thing is someone emailed me and they had, had this. And it, they discovered it didn't go into um, lithium mode. They couldn't get it to do it. So they called uh, the company and they said the support was quite good. They were quite uh, um, reactive to, to the problem and gave them a few tips. I think he had to totally um, run down his lithium battery and bring it all the way back up to full charge. And then it would kick into lithium mode. So, uh, so there was a bit of a glitch there, but they handled it. Uh, let's just give you a quick test. I have a, a meter on here and uh, we got an amp meter here so we can... A quick demo of it in action. You can see when I flip it on it's around 23 amps and then it figures out you know it's a lithium and it has to up the amperage to the max. Be happening in a second here you can see there we go 54 amps coming through. So it is realizing that it's a lithium battery and you can see the voltage is up at 14.45. So here's a look at the blue indicator light. You can see it back there. It's on one of the stand-up circuit boards on the converter charger. If it was in lead acid mode, that would be a green light, so that's one way to tell. But it's kind of like hidden behind in there, and with the cover on, you wouldn't even be able to see it. So I think they should put it more up front. And also, here's the power draw, right around 900 watts. 
Um, so you're getting about 775 watts of charging watts, but you're drawing about 900. So there is some inefficiency, of course, in the process. So there you go. It uh, seems to do the job. If you missed it, I'll link back to my original post where I did the installation and swapped out my old, uh, my old uh, converter charger, the OEM one that I had from back in 2011 and installed the new lithium auto detect version. Uh, I don't know why you'd uh, want to buy the auto detect version if you already had an RV. I think they're more aimed that they can put them in new RVs and then it doesn't matter what the, the end user customer installs, whether it's lead acid or lithium, it'll just work for them. They won't even have to think about it. But they also have a line of replacement um, converter chargers. Here's the lithium ones. And they also have power centers and then they have um, ones that look like they have a, an actual manual switch, which is probably where what I would prefer to to have. You could, uh, you know, if you're using your trailer and you put in your lithium batteries and you switch it to lithium, and then if you ever want to sell your trailer, it's easy just to switch back to lead acid and let the people know that they have that option. Anyway, till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.